Okay, let's get started. This is module one. Today, I have one goal in mind, just one. I want to install and instill in you the entrepreneur's mindset. I want to take you from wherever you are right now mentally to a different place, to a different mental model, a different paradigm, a different way of thinking about yourself and about this vast world around you in Japan and the rest of the world. I want to show you and I want to teach you how to think, act, and transact business like an entrepreneur because I'm going to transform you in the rest of the modules into a successful entrepreneur. So let's start with the entrepreneur's mindset. It is different. It is more animated, more excited, more passionate, and more possibility-oriented than that of the employee. The entrepreneur's mindset starts with a burning desire to create something, to create something of value, whether it's a product, whether it's a service, whether it's a business, no matter what the field, it's the ability to look at an industry and see a gap, to see a hole, to see a weakness that can be filled by you more purposely, more advantageously, more beneficially than the people doing it now. Or it's your ability to learn to see opportunities that aren't being successfully met. Or it's your ability to see areas and ways that you can help people in other businesses be more successful, more productive, uh, more profitable, more effective, less stressful. It's the ability to understand the concept of value creation. So let me explain. Most people don't even know this, but in our lives and in business, we are rewarded and we are successful in direct proportion to the problems we solve for others, the quantity of problems, the quality of problems, the significance of problems, and or the opportunities we create for others. Interestingly, just like you may have started out before you began this course thinking your life was purposeless and limited and helpless and hopeless, many consumers, particularly in your country, many business owners, independent ones, entrepreneurs in your country, don't think they have a lot of options, don't think they have a lot of possibilities, don't think they have a lot of alternatives that they can do to be more successful, to be more profitable, to be happier. So you have a world of limitless possibilities to choose from. But the key to it all is as an entrepreneur, your job is to add more value to whatever area you decide to focus on. And you have infinite areas. We'll go through them through these modules. But it's to be able to go into an area with your business and add value, bring benefit, make people better off because your business or your company or your product is in it. Also, and I think this is something very powerful, just like you as a young adult may feel or may have felt, I hope you don't now because I'm going to be your ally, I'm going to be your advocate, I'm going to be your champion, I'm going to be your supporter throughout this process, and I'm the one who believes in you more than anyone, anyone, because you can do it. But just like you felt helpless and hopeless, a lot of other people that work 
for other companies feel helpless and hopeless and purposeless too. So as an entrepreneur, before you even get started, you have to make some decisions because you do have choices. Many business owners in Japan, the choice that they make is to allow people to continue working in a very unsatisfying and a controlled environment. I'm not passing judgment. I'm only saying that the entrepreneur you want to be is going to be passionate, purposeful, possibility-oriented, and the people you, you bring into your business, whether they're young or old, whether they're untrained or specialized, your commitment is going to be to continually grow and develop them and give them an environment where they are excited, where they are contributing as well. Because when you do that, passion, excitement, commitment is, is operating and driving great success. So you want to be a, a value creator. You want to basically grow and develop other people. You want to be able to add meaningful value by solving problems or creating opportunities for the people that your product, service, or business contributes to. You want also to be a multiplier and not a diminisher. Very important. What is a multiplier? A multiplier is someone in business, an entrepreneur, who through what they do and how they do it, makes everything better. They make their clients feel better. Their product or service makes their clients' life better. They bring a higher state of um, qualitativeness to the product, service, or industry they operate in. They have a greater respect for their employees, and also for their clients. They grow their industry by being more innovative and by continually improving the service. They respect and appreciate their clients, their vendors. They are starting every day with a passionate focus on how many people they'll be able to add value to each and every day in as many ways as possible. A multiplier tries to multiply the impact their company, their product, and their service makes in the market. They never look at it as a commodity. They are not competing because everyone else is really operating with a totally flawed mindset. Most everybody else in whatever business you decide to go into or whatever field you decide to go into or whatever product or service you decide to go into will be operating as if they are a shoe store or if they are a uh, restaurant or if they are a IT consultant. You will go into it with the mindset that you are a creator of value for others. You are a transformer of a more productive and rewarding outcome, that you are adding meaningful and more significant value through your company, product, or service than anyone else, and you will care more about the people you serve, including the, the employees who serve you and who you serve, and you will all come across to your market so powerfully different, so positively significant that your business will go, woo, not instantly, but over a very rapid period of time. Number three, as an entrepreneur, you take the negatives in any situation and you turn them into positives. I have a philosophy, and it, I, I, I've, uh, I use a lot of metaphors, a lot of similes, a lot of examples, because they make it easier for you to see the possibilities. So in the martial arts field, 
there is a form of martial arts called Aikido. Basically, Aikido is a martial arts that uses the power and the force of the enemy back against the enemy to the Aikido master's advantage. So your enemy becomes your greatest weapon of success. In business, as a J. Abraham trained preeminent entrepreneur, you are going to use whatever the problems are, whatever the negatives are, whatever the weaknesses are, and instead of using them as, instead of seeing them as a negative or a detriment, you are going to see them as the greatest opportunity. You are going to learn, not just magical or mystical, but through processes. I will take you through throughout the modules in this program. You're going to see how to turn any negative into a positive. For example, we will show you how having no, no resources, no money, uh, is not a negative. It can be a great advantage because you can find other companies who have an overabundance of resources they are not fully using and arrange ways to partner with them. We will show you how lack of uh, expertise or talent is not a problem because you can joint venture with people who possess talent. We will show you how you can penetrate any and as many industries in as many different product or service categories as you want by merely finding and making uh, associations, alliances, and partnerships with other people who already own the trust and access to the market you want to sell to, market to, penetrate. We will show you how to ethically leverage up, meaning harness over a hundred different elements of other companies' resources. We will show you that in any situation, what you think is your problem is really the opportunity to fill a problem for someone bigger. All you have to do is figure out who they are and what, what, your, what your advantage is to them, and people will eagerly do business with you, for you, partner with you, support you, finance you. We're going to teach you all of the different amazing choices you have. Let me sh share a few right now. Just a few. First thing is you can start a business from scratch with no money at all and build it on a skill set that you have that other people don't that you can offer full-time or part-time, whether it's you're great at organizing uh, time, whether it's you're great at uh, doing exercise, whether you're great at uh, teaching computer, you can build a starting business that way. You can work for a company that has only one facility in one area, and you can make a partnership to take that facility and have them finance you opening another one, or at least licensing their business if it's successful and doing it in another city in Japan. You can get the rights to create new profit centers or service models or products and under the brand of other existing companies. You can partner with media, online, offline, magazines, newspapers, websites, uh, uh, social communities to create products or services. You can create service companies that do not have any, any uh, employees or, or uh, equipment and joint venture with service companies that have employees and equipment but are not utilizing them fully and have them provide the fulfillment, but you sell it under your company name. 
You can acquire rights to tangible items or intangible items. For example, you can get the rights to a product that is very popular in one industry but not even used in another industry and you can get the exclusive rights to sell it in an industry where it doesn't exist. You can get the rights to help grow businesses' profits or save businesses' money, and you don't have to even know how to grow businesses' profits or save them money. All you have to do is find other people who know how to do that and partner with them, bring them in to do it, and you can create half of the profit for yourself. I have, and I'm not going to teach it to you in this module, but I have 10 profit pathways that you can use to create for yourself perpetual, ongoing, recurring, passive income, meaning you don't even have to do more than set it up, negotiate the deal, and you keep getting income streams coming to you for long periods of time, sometimes for life. You can... Find a successful business outside of Japan and get the rights for no capital outlay to license, to franchise, to partner with other successful companies in Japan. You can find successful companies in Japan that have a model that would be very successful in other countries, but they've never taken it there and you can license it. You can find prominent people. They can be celebrities. They can be business people. They can be athletes. And you can arrange to represent them and go to companies and make them the, uh, that company's endorser and charge a fee plus a percentage of the improved sales that that endorsement creates. And you can take a permanent piece of that. You can go to businesses and purchase them without any initial capital by paying the owner out of the future earnings and the growth you create and the extra profit you generate. And I will teach you in one of the module one of the modules exactly how to do that. You can, this is so much fun, you can um, go and buy the rights to a kind of a business outside of Japan, bring it to Japan, and partner with a large facility. For example, here in the United States, there's a man that got the rights to a certain kind of a fast food restaurant, and then he went to large gas stations on the highways and he relicensed that them the right to put those restaurants inside their gas stations. He got a fee, but he got a percentage of the license that he shared with the company in Canada. There are people that just tie up or secure the rights to something and then sell those rights to someone else. Now, let me give you a few real examples, and I'm just introducing you. We're going to go through specific modules over time that help you really get clear on this. But number one, great story. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expand your mind with a bunch of stories. So I started out not having any education, not having any ability, but I was able to find people that had products that they had oversupplies of. They had already paid for the products. They weren't selling. They didn't have a lot of salespeople. The products were not in a lot of stores or uh, uh, appropriate locations. They were sitting in warehouses gathering dust. I made an arrangement to get control of those products and take them to retail stores, take them to restaurants, take them to hair salons, take them to uh, uh, health clubs and place them in their facilities on an arrangement where nobody paid for the products until they had sold. And when they paid, they got to keep a share 
I got to keep a share and the other company who had the product in their warehouse got to keep a share. I did this about 10 different times. The first time I did it, I had no money, no skill. I had no, no capital to pay for the product, but I was able to get control of $500,000 worth of product in one category. I was able to set up arrangements with 40 stores who sold it for me. And I started making 4,000 US dollars a week, every week, without any investment starting three weeks later. I did it again with a totally different product that I put in drug stores all over my city and I started making $4,000 every two weeks from that one. I did it with another product that I was able to take to media and I made $50,000 a month doing that. And I'm going to teach you all the ways I did it. I was able to get the rights one time to a very large publishing company's subscriber list. And because you have a privacy laws, don't misunderstand. They did not give me the list. I created a new profit center that sold complementary products and services that were naturally appealing to the same uh, interest of the people who were subscribing to their publications. I got to use their name. I got to advertise it through their magazines, through their newsletters, through their e-zines, through their website. And I made the first year $8 million. $8 million and I had no money, no capital, but I was able to use their distribution. But I added value to them because they were not doing this and I was able to do it for them. Let me tell you some other stories. A very good friend of mine got started in the flea market business. And the flea market business is a form of a bazaar where you get a very large open space. And on weekends, these spaces have all these uh, vendors that are selling products, food, crafts, etc. You have to have a location that's big enough that you can sell 100 or 200 booths. A friend of mine found one of the largest sports arenas in Los Angeles that was only used through the football season. Nobody used it three quarters of the...